I think it's pretty maintainable. It's all about script placement. I think we just talked about it. Uh, one of my one of my pet peeves is putting the script source inside your content editor web parts. Uh, it's not maintainable if you hard code hard code your scripts in your master pages. Can you imagine going back to all your master pages and having to rewrite a new script version uh, every time you or or if the script name changes? Uh, you can't. Even, it's that's tricky. Don't do it that way. Um, my personal preference again is deploy scripts to a central script document library or to fill the file system with a solution package. Um, <coughs> I think the second one is quicker, it's easier, uh, and uh, like this gentleman pointed out, it's, it's available globally on your, on your site. Uh, one thing... Maybe an addition there. If you want to have it globally and throw out the farm, you can use the additional page at, page at control, and you can inject your JavaScript there, and it will be... Does everybody you know, know what an additional page at control is? You have it. He, he's talking about delegate controls. Any, anybody know what a delegate control, a delegate control is? Okay, I'll, I'll quickly touch on what he just said because he brought it up. Um, every master page in a SharePoint environment has a bunch of, of placeholders. Not the placeholders you're thinking of, but control placeholders. And one of the placeholders that's available on every single page in a, in a, SharePoint, in a SharePoint site is called the additional page head control. And you can actually inject your own controls into that, that placeholder control, which, which will make, you, make your, your, your JavaScript uh, your JavaScript file will be available on every single page in SharePoint. Uh, look up delegate controls. They're actually quite, quite, quite useful in SharePoint, uh, and more people should be using them because it makes things a lot easier. So this is why you bring the MVPs up. You bring up you know, the more complicated topics. I actually did a presentation on delegate controls at SharePoint Saturday. It's a good one. Uh, moving from environments from 2007 to 2010, uh, I've had no problems with it. Uh, it just seems to work for me. Um, one thing you have to make sure of is this. If you're using jQuery to access lists, use the list names, not the GUIs. They change when you upgrade uh, or you migrate or things like that. Uh, for the most part, it does work identically in 2007, 2010, uh, but things are different in 2010. You have a ribbon now. Everything's modal. Everything's AJAX friendly. So you're going to have to, you're going to have to tweak your JavaScript uh, jQuery libraries to take advantage of all these things, the, the ribbon, the modal pop-ups, and things like that. Has anybody used the modal dialogues in SharePoint yet uh, and interacted with them? No? One guy. I've got something to say. So you mean, for instance, you're up, you, want, you have a document library, you want to upload a new file, and you get a modal pop-up with the upload dialog, right? Sure. So it's actually an iframe. It's an iframe within another iframe. There's two iframes. Two iframes loading. It goes pretty deep. Regular loading an ASP page inside that. It is. That's why you can actually post back inside the modal dialog. It's it's, it's quite smart the way they did it. Um, yeah. So I've been trying to pass data through these multiple levels of modal dialogs to it's, get to it's a final pain. stage. And it's a pain in the butt. It's a pain. Um, one thing you could do is you can get. Oh, this is another topic. You can get a hold of that. Um, the current dialogue that's open, the mobile dialogue that's open, this is really off topic. This has nothing to do with jQuery. This is we can just, talk about it after. You want to talk about it after? Sure. Okay. Just remember that question. Uh, the, the quick answer is a reference to that modal dialogue is present on the page at all times so you can get access to it. And you can take the frame element and drop down into, into, the, into the page and drop things into the page that way. Another way to do it is uh, make a global object that stores the information you want to store and have the modal dialogue app transverse upwards into the frame element where the modal dialogue is and grab that and grab that global property. I will try and answer that question less fast next time. Thanks. <clears throat> so is jQuery the answer to all your problems? No. Will it help? Yes. Uh, the thing you have to remember is it's still JavaScript. And you have to be careful when you use JavaScript to do a lot of things in SharePoint. Why? Um, it does expose business logic if you go deep enough, uh, if you have business logic at the, at the client level. Uh, it executes on the client side. It can perform, perform slow if you're manipulating large amounts of data. That's unavoidable. If you're manipulating thousands of items on the client side using JavaScript, it's going to go slow down. I can't, I can't really think of a library that's quick at manipulating thousands and thousands of lines of data. Um, you can't do everything with jQuery. Uh, has anybody worked with timer jobs? Obviously, that's not. There's no client. There's no client. 
There's no client side. You can't do it. Workflow, same thing. Fin handler, same thing. You can't elevate the privileges for the user from a script, from, a, from JavaScript. Uh, and you can't is, easily interact with all business systems. You, it's really just for, I, I recommend jQuery for you know, doing modal dialogues, uh, for interacting with the DOM in an efficient way, manipulating small amounts of data like you would with an image gallery and things like that. Um, you, you can't do everything. I, I, I just want to stress that. It, it, but it does help, especially from a client perspective. Um, has everybody worked with these things? Timer jobs, workflows, bit handlers, things like that? Anybody done a timer job before? All right, I'm just trying to get a feel for uh, what people have done here. So the last thing I want to stress is uh, jQuery is just another tool. Uh, put it in your tool kit. Put it in there. Use it. Figure out when the best time to use it is. Uh, it, it will make your UI sore, I guess. That sounds kind of like a slogan for an ad for jQuery. Like, jQuery, it keeps you wings, like Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Understand the limitations. jQuery can't do everything. Like I just highlighted, it can't do everything, but it will help. And use it wisely. Um, I prefer to use jQuery for um, things that have to have a nice looking facade, uh, for things that have to have an interactive experience for the user. And that's why we use JavaScript most of the time, right? That's why HTML5 is becoming so popular, because it gives you, it gives you that really interactive feel. And that's why you know, Ajax, AJ, Web 2.0, whatever it was called, became so popular so quickly. I'm going to talk about the best third-party component that I'm aware of for, for jQuery and SharePoint. If you guys know any other third-party components, feel free to talk about them. Uh, this, is, this is about SP Services, which is on CodePlex. If you're going to start developing with jQuery and SharePoint, go to CodePlex, get SP Services. It's going to make your life so much easier. Um, it's basically a library which, I think you said this word for word, actually. <laughs> This is a JavaScript library which abstracts SharePoint's web services and makes them easier to use. I think that's what you said exactly. I've had a lot of conversations with Mark Anderson. Fair enough. Um, everybody's aware of the uh, SharePoint web services that are out there, correct? Has everybody used the SharePoint web services before? Who's used SharePoint web services before? Uh, if you were to describe your... Uh, oh, sorry. You want me to ask you? Go ahead. Give me a face. If you were to describe uh, your experience with SharePoint web services, how would you describe it? This SMS. Yeah, this SMS. Anyone else? That's just one particular web service you use. Anybody else use the list uh, the SharePoint web services? I'd rather use the API. You rather use the API. That's what I was looking for. It may, it is it is quite cumbersome. You have to know Camel. You have to you have to know how to pass in the the, the soap envelope into it. It's, it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a pain in the butt. But with this with SharePoint SP Web Services, uh, it basically puts it in a le tight little package for you. And it's basically like using the API, and it again it works entirely on the client, it, not on the server side. Okay, so what can this library do? Uh, pretty much anything the web services can do: uh, get list items, add, update list items, uh, create lists, content types, site columns. Create document library folders, cascading drop down lists, get user groups and permissions. It, like I said, it could potentially call any SharePoint web service. So, from the client side, from the client object model, you can access any of these services. You don't have to. You don't have to interact with the API. You don't have to create a, an assembly and deploy it to the GAC or the bin and, and reference it and use it in your, your control. You can do it all from from the client side with the, the user running with their privileges, which is which is pretty key. I feel like you have, this, you have something to say. Yeah, yeah. It's just I just want to add that. Let's keep in mind that it's always security trimmed, which means that if you if you don't have rights to do anything, yes, behind the scenes you're gonna get an error, but you can always manipulate that and show it nicely. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's not give the feeling that you can do what you can. Oh no 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 no. no. So, so, you know what I mean? so, good point. Good point. So I don't, I'm not saying you can do anything you want in SharePoint, Liz, and you, when you don't have permissions to do it. Uh, it's going to give you, within your, the context of your user and your permissions, it's going to give you permission to get list items that you have access to, add update list items that you owe to, to document libraries that you have access to. Like I said, jQuery when running inside SharePoint runs with the privileges of the user. So everything's going to be, like he said, everything's going to be trimmed. So when you call to that web service, it's going to be security trimmed. So go ahead. Can you elevate the permissions if you need to? Not from, the, not, not, not from JavaScript. 
Well, there's there's only one way, but it's, it's officially hacking, and you can use uh, cross-site scripting. You have, and, and then yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I didn't, uh, so I, I didn't say it. <laughs> The MVP did not say that. He's going to take his license. <laughs> MVP license revoked. No, no, it says, but it, security, uh, there are lot, tons of security updates. For example, there was such a thing in 2007, and, and they keep, uh, Microsoft keep, keeps uh, bringing up uh, updates, and then those, those XSS uh, issues are resolved. One thing you could do, uh, unofficially, <laughs> is you can create your own web service uh, and use elevator privileges, but pass in the user context. Use the elevator privileges to trim it any way you want. Um, people do that all the time. I'm not saying I do. Uh, <laughs> but that is a way around it. Like, uh, like he said, uh, you can hack SharePoint until you're blue in the face. There's so many, there's so many different ways around things that's unbelievable. And sometimes, sometimes Hacking is, why do I keep saying hacking? Hacking is the only way to do it. Uh, Using but it in unsupported methods. <laughs> unsupported methods are sometimes the only way you can get things done. Okay? Uh, that's the best way I can put it. He did not say it, I said it. I'm not the MVP. <laughs> yeah, so you can't elevate, you can't, out of the, without hacking, uh, you can't elevate the privileges of the user at the client level. You can't, uh, the client object level. Uh, alternatively, is there some way to uh, assert whether or not current user context would have right to that list so that you could avoid going to the error dialog and just say, oh, he doesn't have right, so I move, move on? You can, you can actually check for permissions. That's, okay. one, of the, that's one of the API, actually. Okay. That's, one of the, that's, one of the, that's one of the services that's, that's encapsulated inside SP services. You can check for permissions before you do anything. But at the same time, if you, you know you're going to get a response back from the web service, and it's going to give you a detailed message. It's going to say, it's not like you're going to get an error message on the screen, like one of those huge yellow SharePoint errors that always scare the crap out of us, with a red, highlighted red part, and it's, it's always, always weird. Um, you know you're going to get a message back, you're going to get an XML document back, uh, and you're going to be able to manipulate it and say, well, what's the error message that I got? Okay, let me, let me put up a friendly message that says, no, sorry, you're out of luck, you can't do that. Something a little bit more friendly. And you have time to do that because it's all client-side, it's not like there's a page refresh or anything like that. Anybody else got a question about that? Just remember, scripts run with the privileges of the user, so you're okay to call those web services. You're not hacking anything. You're, call that web service and that web service is going to give you back exactly what you have permission to. And another thing, not yep. only web services, you can also call RPCs, remote uh, procedure calls. I never use remote yeah, procedures. So, right. Yeah, so I mean, th that's even possible if, if you know how to call it, but you can even call the uh, RPCs. Basically, well, because you can make a, you can make XML HTTP request, yes, right? Yes, exactly. And that's exactly what it encapsulates. Yeah. Like it's, why do I say that so fast? XML HTTP requests. Uh, it allows you to do those in SharePoint. Make our RPC calls, which are almost like REST uh, REST services, almost like that. You sort of have a query string with a long URL, and you make a call to it. Um, in my experience, uh, SP services works identical in SharePoint 2007, SharePoint 2010. I think I've said this about 14 million times. I want that to be very important because I want to get the, the, the secure. It's not secure. Uh, myth busted. Uh, every JavaScript file you run runs in the, the, with privileges of the user. So it is it's just as secure as anything else you're running client side. Uh, and you can communicate across sites. Uh, okay, so for those not familiar, wow, that's really small. Um, this is the basic syntax for, for an SP service. You call into the SP service object. You specify your operation. You specify the URL uh, of the uh, of the site that you're using. Is that really small? Should I make it bigger? Yes. I wonder if I can. No, it did not work at all. Sorry. Uh, um, basically, it's just an object. It's just a, I'm calling into an SP service. Uh, I'm specifying the operation, which is the operation name for.